Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Civilization VI series. The last few games we've played, we have won a science victory, we have won a military victory, a cultural victory, a religious victory, and now I want to win a diplomatic victory. So what do you need to win a diplomatic victory? You need a sieve that has good amounts of production and good amounts of gold. And as long as well as that production and gold, you also need a decent amount of culture to hit the key wonders that you need to build. So I was thinking I normally go random here. Last game I chose Japan to work on my micro. I definitely want to get a Diplo sieve this time. So what sieve is good at producing production, gold and culture? Well, that would be Wilhelmina of the Netherlands. So I think we're going to start up a game as the Netherlands and hopefully we get a good enough start to make a Diplo victory possible. Here's the start location that we've run and I like it so far. There's so much gold in this starting location. We also have a very decent amount of production around to be able to build districts. This is great. So Wilhelmina, who is Wilhelmina and what do the Dutch do? Well, Wilhelmina is all about settling rivers and lakes and weird coastal tiles. So with the Netherlands, your trade routes give you loyalty and your trade routes to or from foreign cities give you culture. So you're incentivized to build trade routes, so harbors or commercial hubs but you also want sieves to send their trade routes to you so building a city with lots of districts in it is also kind of important so a large well-developed capital is going to be a major boon you also get major adjacency to campus theater and industrial zones on a river. So that's campus theater, industrial zones, and commercial hubs, because commercial hubs automatically get that adjacency from a river. And you get a culture bomb for completing your harbor. You get faster dams and flood barriers. So you are like encouraged to settle floodplains. You're encouraged to settle rivers, coasts, and build up you can get a very easy plus four industrial zone early on with Wilhelmina, which is nice. But the one thing everybody talks about is the polders. So polders are a thing you build on coastal tiles. They have to touch like two coastal tiles and it gives you food and production and gold as you go through the, the tech tree. So at the end of the game, they create a crazy, crazy amount of yields. But they're really hard to find a good place to place because they have to touch three passable land tiles. So if we look here, we have one, two, three, four. This is a polder right here. One, two, three. This is a polder also. So I definitely want to have these marked uh, add attack. I definitely want to mark these as polders. This is also going to be a polder. Now to get polders, uh, you have to have what civic? What civic is this unlocked at? Uh, let's go to the civilpedia Polder. It's pretty far in the tree. Guilds. Yeah, okay. So we want to be working our way towards guilds and getting that boosted fairly early. So that's two markets, 10 population. Let's look here. Two markets, 10 population, six farms. This we can't control. We could build two campuses reliably. We're, we might not get the wonder in time. So we'll have to hard tech this. So, this is the direction we want to move towards, over towards guilds here. But we're not going to lock that in this early. We're just going to go back. All right. What to do with my first warrior? If I move here, I could possibly scout out another polder. But I'm thinking that this opens up here. If we look here, the river opens up. 
So this is coast and this is coast. So unless this turns like this, these are the only two polders I'm getting in this direction. But if I move my scout or my warrior up here, I get a better view of all of this. So I think this is the direction to move. Okay, so if we look here, we have one, two. We might be able to get a polder here. We'll have to check that next turn. My settler is definitely moving up on this tile. Unfortunately, we can't build anything on a reef. So, also, this would not be polderable because it only touches one passable land tile. The reason I want to settle here is I have production, I get production, I have three food, and I have gold, and I can very easily move on to more production pretty quickly with my cultural borders. And that leaves most of this river open for districting for my capital, which is exactly what I want from it. But it does slow us down by one turn, which can be detrimental. Settle here. We settled on a floodplain, so we do get the bonus error score. So, let's look here. One, two, three. This is a polder. And getting three polders like this is actually fairly rare. Uh, I've played a bunch of test games as the Netherlands, and getting like all of this lined up was actually an incredibly rare. Usually you get like one polder. Most of the time, you guys know, you've seen the coastlines, and most of the time it's just like you get two tiles like this all the time, but very rarely do you get the three tiles set up like this. Okay, so what do we want to build first? With uh, the Netherlands, you're encouraged to play pretty wide. So, I want to consider my build order to get there. I want to get Animal Husbandry pretty early. So let's move into Animal Husbandry to get this. I could unlock a builder from a tribal hut. I almost always build a scout first, so we're going to go scout. Maybe scout scout or scout flinger. I haven't decided yet. I've been playing pretty greedy the last few games. Or, yeah. Oh, that's perfect. That is so perfect. Owls of Minerva, we are going to appoint you and get uh, an early economic policy slot is so good for us and this is one envoy into an economic city state which is going to give us so much gold we're already making 12 gold per turn we're working this tile if i work this tile we might actually grow a lot faster so that saves two turns on growth it does cut my uh, scout by two turns but I think that's worth it we're not losing that much gold I would rather grow than produce right now and I think we're going to make a big loop with this warrior and scout down here and send another scout this way that's the what I'm looking for seeing another river up here that's the direction I want to settle I want all my cities to be on rivers because I get that bonus for rivers. There is somebody. Maybe uh, if that's Greece, I'm going to be so mad. If that's Greece, we might have to kill them. Because Greece can ruin a Diplo game so fast. No, okay. Robbie can be very aggressive. I might want to consider sending him a delegation turn one. He can be very aggressive. He can he can get crazy technological leads really quickly. So I need to be careful with him because he's a potential rival. And look at that. Free builder. All right. Okay, this is the dream run. Let's just not screw this up. This is such a good, good start. Crazy polders, 
a good start here. I guess I'm not going to be able to get up onto this river fast enough. One, two, three. I might be able to settle here. Let's consider settling here. Probably a first settle, but I would have to have the military to back that up. Settling that without a military is a death wish. And then my scout definitely is going to go down this way. Two turns until I can get some more production off this tile. And look at all the gold we're already bringing in. I might even consider buying a military unit off of this barbarian camp as soon as I find it. So seeing him up there, it definitely makes me want to go for a slinger for protection. Uh, he is, like I said, aggressive. He already doesn't like me. I want to be careful with him around. And I want to keep exploring this coast. See, this is what most coastal tiles look like, right? You can't polder any of this because it's only one, two, two adjacent tiles. I think they really need to buff the polders a little bit because... Not because they're not good, because they are very good. I just think they need to buff them to make them a little bit more available. Because I feel like we don't get them very often. They're kind of a rare deal. Nalanda. That's science. Not a first meet on Nalanda, so somebody is down there already. I want to be paying attention to the city-states in this game, because... We want to court them. I want them to be on my side. There's a river right down here. So we want to be looking in that direction. Antonarivo. First meet on Antonarivo. So it looks like somebody's over here. Oh, uh, Polder. Is that a one-tile lake? Yes. So there's a city down here. If we want it. I want to keep this scout going this direction. I don't want the scout coming towards my city. Ah, crap. Wisdom. Okay, so we can, since we're Alza Minerva, we can throw in both of these. And that helps us produce even faster. I need to find a way to cut that scout off. I don't want it coming towards me. This is not a very good city location. I can get some good polders over there, but I don't get my river bonus. I want to go... Do I want craftsmanship? I think I want to go into foreign trade. Because if I get a city up here, I can fight the loyalty issues with a trade route. And hopefully I can buy the trader. Oh, what am I doing? I've missed two turns of production off of my cattle farm. Okay, keep him moving in the direction I want him to go. This is much better. Look, this is a polder. Polder goes there. One, two, three. Polder goes here. Okay, polder goes here. I wish you could put polders on reef tiles. Can I? I don't think I can, right? I'll keep that there, but I don't think I can put a polder down on a reef tile. Polder goes there. If I can... One... No, those aren't polderable. So this would be a good... Location. Not you, delete you. This would be a good area for a city. Possibly a city here, because then I could get some... Uh, river districting done. It's pretty far away, and this lacks production. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, maybe a city goes here. And I could pull to right here. Right, but... And try to squeeze another city somewhere along this river... Maybe squeeze a city. I don't know. Maybe down here. To take advantage of all the river tiles that I can take advantage of. 
I want to be planning as many cities as possible because I need all the trade routes I can get. Okay, what do I do now with this builder? I don't have the technology to chop any of these things, but I do want to start getting farms. So it might be worth layering, throwing down farms, even if... 155 for a spearman. So next turn I'll get a spearman out of here. And send that spearman and a slinger down to deal with this. That's a good use of my gold because it'll scare off Babylon just a little bit. And you start building my settler now. Even if I get rid of these farms... Is that a good use of my builder like charge? Let's consider that. We'll start moving you down. Let's hire you. And we'll start moving you down. You need to go up to deal with any problems that that's going to cause. Okay, so I want to get my districts along this river. We definitely need to get an aqueduct or a dam. This has got to go. I'm going to be depending on this for food. So I would like to go industrial zone, aqueduct, dam. Where's the dam? Can't place it there. Delete it. I would like to get a dam. <laughs> I definitely want to get a dam here because this is going to flood so much. But I would have to get the dam. The dam would have to go here. So that has to, we have to refinagle everything here. That's such a good campus. I can't ignore that campus. So if we go on uh, industrial zone, we could put a campus. We could put a commercial hub. And then we could go for the government plaza. The government plaza is much less important for me because I already get decent adjacency bonuses. And look, this is already really good. And then maybe, just maybe, we go for a theater square up there. We might have to put the, the government plaza somewhere else so that I can get advantage off of it. When I plan another city, I'll think about the government plaza. But this is already so many districts for this city to have to work out. It's going to be a long time before I get this industrial zone, so we're going to go ahead and plop a farm there so that we can grow. Aztecs. That's great. Uh, he's going to hate me, and I don't have enough stuff to send you a delegation. He's really close. This is getting to be a very scary start position. I'll take your delegation, even though that's probably just to attack me. Saladin, where are you? He's the one who met Nalanda over there. Well, I need to start killing barbs because that'll make everybody like me just a little bit better. They like you for taking care of the barbarian situation. But all of these people are fairly aggressive and they all have much larger militaries than I do. No man ever wetted clay. The person that was most aggressive here, I would say, is Montezuma. So I want to send you a delegation. He won't take it. Can I send you a delegation? He won't take it. And I already have a delegation with you. Oh, no. All right, they're going to denounce me soon. I need to turtle up a bit. Start dealing with barbarians. 
Oh, this is this is getting pretty scary. Pottery is done. I want to go forward to writing, but I think we need to take a moment to step off and go towards mining to get some production to defend myself. Because they're looking pretty aggressively at me. And I don't want to lose this early. Wow, you were so close. I'm feeling really boxed in, too. There is a lot of people all around me. It looks like I'm going to have to settle naturally down here. I don't think I'm going to really get this city up here. I'll keep it there just in case. I can also grab a city in this direction. I would like to grab a city here. One, two, three. I would like to grab a city here. And I would like to grab a city here. I would like to have those. This is scary though, because I'm settling right in his face. His military is huge. My military is tiny. He has a decent, decently small advantage on tech on me. Uh, so that's... Settling here is a fairly bold move. <laughs> it's an aggressive move on my part. Let's hope it pays off. You just hang out until I can chop down some stuff. I've only got one charge in you left, so chopping a builder is going to be what you do, most likely. Where was the barb camp up here? There was a barb camp there. I think I can kill it with my slinger next time to get the boost to archery, which is going to be important enough for me to try to get. He hates me. We are going different societies, and he does not like that. There we go. Boosted archery. Jump on here. Kill that tribe. Can I hire? No, nine turns. Ooh, I would like to spend my money uh, on production here. Because I have so much of it. I need to leverage it to my advantage. Disperse. I used to raid the camps all the time, and now I just never raid them. And then we'll send you back to get an archer. That should make people like me a little bit, since I've taken the time to take out the barbarians. But just as often, it probably means that they're going to hate me because they have no one to target now but the barbarians. Did you get another? No way, pal. Okay. No. No, you don't. Because this city is too good and this city is too garbage. Oh, no, Monty. I really want a Diplo game, but we might have to take the time to, to trim him back a little bit. Who deserves more credit? That is nonsense. You can't put a city there. What even kind of city is this? I mean, it's not the worst AI city I've seen, but that was going to be my next settle. So I guess I have to now settle in his face over here. I need to chop rainforest. But it's just too far away. Let's go ahead and get some extra production, and we'll work on writing to get the campus here. What a trash play. And he's coming. He's coming in my direction, so I need to consolidate my forces down here. Get you in the city, and we'll upgrade you. Okay, thank you. He doesn't hate me. Every nation lives by exchanging. Can't do anything here. Can I? I think I have enough to purchase myself. 
Let's consider sending him a delegation. Just to keep him off of war for a bit. Let's... Oh, I don't have archery yet. Nine turns? I can wait. I can wait that little bit for that. Promote you. Uh, I should have done the other one. I'm so used to doing uh, melee units that I clicked the wrong one there. Don't do the mistake that I made. Purchase the trader, and we'll send that trader towards Nalanda, I think, to get the envoy there for science. And I want and need you to build me another slinger. What we want to go to now is probably craftsmanship because I'm going to need lots of builder charges to like do anything in this area. Because it's just so woody and jungly that I need to clear it all out. Which means Magnus is going to be a really big uh, governor for me to get. I will take your delegation. Hopefully he, like... Decides to be pretty friendly with me. I can't send you to Nalanda. Because I don't have... Okay. Well, let's see. Let's make our choice. Train a heavy chariot. Inspiration for craftsmanship. I'm working on craftsmanship. I've improved... Two tiles. That got wrecked. I could probably boost that pretty easily. This is not going to get me anything... I'm probably never going to train a heavy chariot. So let's go ahead and get an extra envoy up here. What is? What do you give me? Wonders. Great people. Trading domes. If I send you to Samarkand, you're just going to get eaten by the barbarians. I could get myself a road going towards Teo to murder it. But with the Owls of Minerva, you do kind of want all of your trade routes going towards city-states. So, let's get the Envoy there. I could purchase a Heavy Chariot to get myself Susan T. I want to keep moving in this direction. Okay, I am so upset about this city being founded right here. Okay, so we founded our city over here. It looks like Monty is friendly with us currently, which is good for us. It's good news for us. There's bronze working, which will help me chop down rainforest. I want to get Slinger over here pretty fast because he could always betray me at any minute. And I have one spare turn, and we're going to pop that into a builder. And the next turn oh, we're throwing... No, oh, there's Canada. Yeah. Wow. Why weren't you near me? Why weren't you near me instead of these guys? So let's destroy you. Get the points for that. Go up here. Kill you. And you can be promoted, which is nice. Okay. So instead of continuing this builder production, let's throw down our campus. It's a plus three campus in nine turns, which is pretty quick. We are a little research, like, production starved here, so we need to keep that in mind. Barbarians, archers, let's go with the, let's go with archers over bronze working. Okay, he's an Alza Minerva person too. With the military that I have, I feel quite a bit more, like, comfortable playing a little greedier. So I don't think we need to go for much more military. He's got a lot, but he's not got enough to deter me. And I'll grab my first friendship there. He does have Stonehenge. I can't let this city stand. So we are going to go to war with him eventually, but I would like to be friendlier with Saladin or Hammurabi before we go to war with him. I can't let that city exist. And the longer he exists, the more he's just going to build. 
I need to start getting my tech edge over him. And gives as many useful objects, such as... Do I still not have my Pantheon? That's kind of ridiculous. I've been running the Pantheon card for ages. What feels like ages, at least. Okay, so... I need some more scouting done with you. Let's send you over this way. Oh, my beautiful Polder City. This is what happens. This is what happens pretty often. They're hard to get. They're very strong when you do get them, but they're very hard to get. I've got four population here. This will get boosted soon enough. Yeah, that'll get boosted in four turns. So we'll go ahead and start that. Abi Hammurabi is best. Yes. Thank you. Please like me a little bit more so you won't declare war on me. That's what I want. Let's promote you to volley. And as soon as I get archery, they get upgraded. I can purchase myself a builder. I should have boosted craftsmanship. I didn't I didn't remember to do that, which is bad on my part. I can purchase a builder. What does purchasing a builder do for me? If I had bronze working and Magnus, purchasing a builder here would be pretty good. But as of right now, it's just nothing. Purchasing a builder here, if I had bronze working means I could cut that down, but I don't have it. So purchasing a builder is useless currently. What else can I purchase? I have 200 gold, so I'd like to spend it on something. Nope, we'll just save it up for the archer upgrades. So they got Judaism. They're going to be spreading that my way soon enough. Battle cry. And we're just sort of hanging out and waiting to get another settler, which we can spend up here. And I'm waiting for this campus to finish. Stonehenge is done. It's right there. There's our Pantheon, finally. I feel like that took ages. Not there. So, what are we going to choose? I'm never going to build holy sites, so that doesn't matter. Marsh, Oasis, Desert, Floodplains, I don't have it. I do have a decent amount of plantations. Culture would be good. That would be good because I'm going to hopefully be settling a few cities, but I am pretty like constrained here. I'm cramped up from what I can see. I'm only going to be getting use out of that in like three cities. So not pastures. That's the wrong one. Plantations. Let's go for plantations. And we'll just go ahead and get some early culture running so that we can get that's plus two, plus four, plus six, plus eight. I mean, that's enough. Plus 8 culture off our Pantheon is pretty decent. But I really didn't have too many good options in that situation. I really need more map information before I can start making decisions. I wish I would have gone for the double... Thank you. I wish I would have done for, gone for a double scout opener. Early Empire is boosted. So in four turns, we'll start cranking out a ton of settlers. I would like to get Magnus. Right here. In four turns, I'll get Magnus. One turn, I'll be able to get my archers. I need to swing down. I need to swing up one to get the land route to Nalanda. And then swing down to check. I was really hoping to have more space. Right now I've gotten nothing. I think because I can see that, then that means I can get to Nalanda. Who's research? Bronze working now. Because I need to be able to chop out rainforest. 
and then you're gonna get upgraded and you're gonna get upgraded and we will buy a builder in a couple of turns I'm rolling in money I got plenty of money This looks like it goes on a little longer than I thought. He has declared war on Brussels. Which is not what I want to see. Because Brussels was a city that I had planned on keeping around for a little while. What an absolute... Never again can I gaze upon the beauty. Cradle Lake. Okay, so... One, two, three. Teo's gotta go. One, two, three. Can I get a city? Let's delete this. One, two, three. Can I get a city here? Not there. Here. And I would need... That city has got to go next, and I would need to buy that tile and get a harbor down here. If I could get a harbor here... Why can't I get a harbor here? Ah, uh, it's a reef. That ruins everything. Because I can't culture bomb that. Teo has to go. There's no, no no other way around it. Teo can't exist. Instead of building uh, a polder here. I have... How many lake tiles do I have? If I had enough lake tiles, it would be good to build Huey there. But I don't have enough lake tiles. A polder would be better. Ah, I'm trying to figure out a way to to not go to war with him. But this this city can't exist. I can get a city down here. We're going to delete you, move you up back to where we wanted you. And then I can get a city somewhere down here. Yeah, looks like we've got to go spank him a little bit. Which means I'm going to have to delay. Let's purchase that. I'm going to have to delay something. His military is large. But mine is also pretty large. Let's go with some more archers. We have a Spearman, and I think we're going to go for an early war against Montezuma. I think that's what we're going to have to... Oh, he's already got walls there. That's a problem. That's a big problem. Such a problem. Ah! I hate that. If he's got a wall there... What is the chances of what are the chances of me being able to do anything? Slim. They're really slim. Oh, I really I can't figure out what I want to do there. If he's got a wall there that really slows down like my ability to do anything. So point you in Rotterdam. And we'll buy a builder when we can and start chopping things out here. I would have four archers. Four archers and a spearman. And a decent gold income to, to start buying other things. Oh, this is this is Polder Polder Plaza right here. Let's attack city. No rivers for my districts, but good Polder city there. 
Okay, I have to make the choice. Like, I can't keep wishy-washy deciding what I'm going to do here. I either have to make the decision to go to war with him or not to go to war with him. Killing Teo is my goal. Uh, Chochikalko doesn't really matter that much to me. So I think I can go to war with him, just erase that city, get my own city in place. 143. 143 is doable. That's doable. Get my own city in place. And just Bronze is the mirror deal with the his is denouncements for the next few turns. I think that's what I have to do. With that, I think I'm going to end this episode. Everybody, what would you do in this situation? Would you go to war with Monty to clean up uh, all of the, the terribleness that he did there? What would you do in this situation? As always, thank you for watching. My channel's been growing so much, and I'm on the road to 500 subs. That's my goal, to hit 500 subs before November, which would be my first year on YouTube. So if you're watching my channel and you've seen a couple of videos and you're not subscribed, please take the time to subscribe. I appreciate it so much. This has been SCG Sheep, and as always, I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.